We can do like a old promo for Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> right. So not get any of the. <laughs> Rachel runs on Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. What sparked your interest in Guatemalan fabrics? What made you want to do the project on that? Well, I think the first. I actually, my mom is really like in love with. Mexican folk art and Guatemalan fabric, and so she has all these purses um, that are Guatemalan fabric. And then we would always go down to San Antonio to visit family, and there's flea markets along the way. And so one time she bought me a purse. Let me grab that. She bought me this purse, and I was just like obsessed with it. I mean, yeah. I still am. I love it. And so it was really this purse that really got me interested to look into other fabrics and other styles of um, Guatemalan textile. And then after that, once I met Grace, I got to know that there's different like patterns for each village and stuff. And it's just very beautiful. And like I love the colors, just awesome. How did you meet Grace? <clears throat> did that all come about? Oh, I met Grace actually whenever my mom came to visit me the first time. Um, after I moved up here, we were just walking around and my mom saw her stand outside of anthropology. We went to anthropology and my mom saw her stand and was like, wow. And then we just sat there and talked to her for like a good four or five hours, I feel like. It was probably only like an hour, but um, my mom was talking to her forever. And then when I started working on this project for fellowship, my mom, I was talking to her about how I just wish I had someone with more information. I was like, oh, I have Grace's number. I was like, no, <laughs> how do you have her number? I can't believe you didn't tell me earlier. And so I think that this is kind of just evolved into something I'm hoping to use in my like fashion designs for like the rest of my life. I think that I, I think it's a beautiful art and I'd like to support it and I'd like to keep it going. Grace, when did you first become interested in Guatemalan culture and how did your career, or how did your path, I guess, continue from that point on? Okay, well, um, I had, uh, I'm a student of mental health social services, okay, and I wanted to work with indigenous people and so that I could figure out how we as our society was like disconnecting and not being as healthy as we could. And so I wanted to join Vista Volunteers and go out into the reservations of the United States. But because I was on the East Coast, they wanted to send me to Columbia, South Carolina, and it wasn't what I had in mind. So I then met a friend, and we made our way to Latin America and to Ecuador. Okay, wow. And being able to be with the Quechua Society there, I thought, well, okay, this is a better pursuit where I can be immersed into the culture and I can also buy product and make it beneficial to both of us. Okay. Um, and so then that led me into following the four indigenous countries, which were Ecuador, Bolivia, Peru, and Guatemala. And uh, when I got to Guatemala, I just realized that's where my heart was. It was colorful and the indigenous were much more open uh, I think because it's the tropics, so they were mm -hmm. more receptive to foreigners. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So cool. Okay, so um, I was also wondering what the differences are between weaving on the foot loom and the back strap, and if you happen to know any of the origins of that. Um, the origins of back strap weaving, I'm not sure how that came about. Okay. But, you know, it's where the woman ties the loom to her back and often attaches it to a pole or a tree. Oh. And it's about probably, I would say, 16 inches wide. Okay. And she would weave that entire piece without pattern. Wow. Um, and then join and weave a second piece and not measuring anything as she goes along. Oh, wow. And that when they're finished, that they will perfectly match up. So like this That's would this incredible. is woven on back strap. Back strap. Woven. Wow. Yeah. I can't imagine weaving this without a pattern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, like... first let's not forget about the foot loom. Oh yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Which which comes mostly from Quetzaltenango, where the men 
do the flip room, and often they would be in a room, um, I don't know, a third the size of this living room, and set up, and basically the flip room just almost occupies the entire room, and he sits there, and he's you know, throwing the ecot threads in. Yeah. Like this skirt on the back here is um, done, woven on a foot loom by a man with all the ecot wow. design. Yeah, it's pretty intense. As Western culture and ideals make their way into the lives of the younger generation, this amazing centuries old art form becomes in danger of being lost. Lo mejor y lo importante es tenerlo este diseño, porque con el tiempo este diseño se termina, porque como ahora ya hay muchos que estudian, ya no hacen el diseño, y yo no quiero que se termine los diseños, es por generaciones. La mamá, su mamá le enseñaba, mi sí. mamá me enseñó. De ahora, yo estaré enseñándole a, a mis hijas. Así. Uh -huh. These women struggle daily, but their energy, creativity, and sense of beauty find an outlet in their weaving. They do this in an effort to sustain themselves, their families, and their culture. The creation of huipils is a tangible art form. It represents both the continuity and change of Maya culture, community, and identity. There's something about Guatemala. The colors, the warmth penetrate. The experience, the people, stay with you long after you've left. We started this project hoping to capture the weaving process. But in the end, we were allowed so much more. Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> totally filming. All right. are they giving you? Do you know? Four. Or like how many? Four? Okay. But they don't have heads, so I can't can't put the hat in the headband. Oh, that's okay. That's so cute. Yeah. What, um, what exactly are you installing today? Do you have, like, you have all the I'll looks, have, right? Um, yeah, the three looks, and then the traditional wee peel and corte. And Is then, the wee peel going to go on the wall, or do you, or do you, do you, like, do you want it to I be a put, piece? I put or? that on a form. Oh, nice. Okay. I'll put that on a form, too. Are you totally stoked? I'm so stoked. It's gonna yeah. look incredible. It's like my first <laughs> gallery installation ever. You have a really great space too, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it's like okay. a, it's a lot of space. For a second there, I thought you disappeared. Rains a lot this time of year. And we both go together if one falls down. Now talk out loud like you're still around. 